Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is enjoy. Enjoy. Now, I hope you're enjoying your morning, afternoon, evening, whenever the, you may be watching this. I know some of you watch it in the morning, so I hope you enjoy your day. If you happen to be in the evening, I hope you've had a good day to enjoy. You might be stuck in the middle and like I hadn't decided yet, but that's kind of the point. Uh, so somebody, what we talked about yesterday with emptiness and, and vanity and even what Solomon says and uh, thinking about how everything just seems to be pointless uh, without God. That's the key that we have to remember. And so some of these things, Solomon learns these lessons the hard way. And some of them, you know, we can learn just as we're using in Proverbs, right? We can learn from other people's mistakes. That's where wisdom comes in. And even as Solomon is sharing things you know, either personal experiences or things that he's observed, we can learn from those without having to kind of pay the price first. But here's the thing today, as we talk about enjoy, it's, you know, we talk about all these things. It's not that we shouldn't be working, shouldn't be, uh, you know, spending time with our, our families and trying to do all these other things that we say, okay, well, in the end, it's not going to matter. But at the same t- at the same time, Today is a day that God has blessed you with. And so that's really the thought here between, uh, or excuse me, the thought behind Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 24 through 26 today. And it says, Nothing is better for a man uh, than that he should eat and drink, and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also, I saw, was from the hand of God. For who can eat? Or who can have enjoyment more than I? For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. And I think that middle verse I read there, you see in some translations, it's saying, you know, who could have more enjoyment than I? And in some translations, um, they, they translate it as who could have more enjoyment without God. And, and that's the same. The, the token is the same. If Solomon is saying that I have God and that's why I'm able to enjoy even the fruits of my labor. I, I mean, that's one of those things. If you know you have a, a, a good hard day of work and, and something where you can see and feel accomplished, you can take some enjoyment in that. It's not, not a prideful thing, not a pat on the back. Hey, look what I did. And not a thing where we're focused on the material things, but that we're focused on being thankful for the moments that we've been given. Thankful for the opportunities that we have, the opportunities to work, the opportunities to rest, the opportunities we're going to look tomorrow that there's a time for everything. And and so to think about what God has blessed us with, who should be enjoying life more than a believer? If we have the, the presence of God, we have all the almighty God, the Holy Spirit living inside us of believers, who should be enjoying life more than you or I? And I think even as Solomon was writing this, right, it, he didn't have that, right? He had a relationship with God, but he didn't have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit that we have because that was after long after Solomon was dead and gone. So think about how much richer his words are for you and I, that who could enjoy life more than someone who's indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God? And I like how that even that last part, he says, look, even the things you're chasing after and the things that you're doing, don't forget that God sees all and God rewards all. Even there in that last verse that we read, you know, he says, well, he'll take uh, those who are doing good and reward them even with the things that come from the sinner and from the evil one, really. So to think about it, it's kind of the, I remember the, the analogy, rather, of, of a gentleman said that a pastor one time and said, you know what? He said, maybe you don't like to tie. And maybe you find out that your car keeps breaking down. And then maybe if you really find out, it's because your mechanic ties to the Lord. And and even just something like that made me think, you know, that God owns it all and, and God can control all. And I'm not saying that's, yes, that's absolutely why your car broke down or But it's something for us to think about. Are we enjoying life? Are we enjoying what God has blessed us with? Are we, with that token, are we giving back to God as we ought to? Because we ought to enjoy giving as well. Because we know that God loves a cheerful giver. So just think about today all the things that you could enjoy. 
We often think about enjoying what we can get, but today think about how you can enjoy what you give, the work that you give out, the the help that you give others, even the way that you give back to God in serving him. Because after all, who should be enjoying this life more than a believer? You know, the let me let you in on a little secret. You don't only get to enjoy this life, you get to enjoy the next life as well. In an eternity in heaven. Oh, what a day. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.